Now, we come to a really meaty part of the day. Because, of course, the people in the uh, front line of trying to meet the global challenges of getting recovery and growth to deliver all the jobs that citizens need and so on are the governors of the central banks of certain countries. And our next session has a collection of them, and I'd like to invite them to the stage. Mervyn King, the governor of the Bank of England, Sir Mervyn King. Also, Alexander Tombini. Yes, please do come. Alexander Tombini, the governor of the Central Bank of Brazil. Augustin Carstens, the governor of the Central Bank of Mexico and Italian, Mario Draghi, the president of the European Central Bank. And uh, economists, I think all of you to a man, aren't you? You know what they say when economists get together. Yeah. But there we go. So Mervyn, you're going to um, talk a bit about the global challenges, but first you want to kick off about uh, London as a financial center. So I please. Do. Thank you. And then I'll come back and uh, conduct some Q's and A's for you. Well, Zaina, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, or should I say fellow competitors, <laughs> for competition is at the heart of a successful market economy. But unlike the struggle for the Olympic gold medals, trade is a positive sum game. And our gathering here today provides an opportunity to view the financial system from its historic center. In the 19th century, London's markets financed the world's trade. London became the center of transactions in a wide range of financial instruments. And unfortunately for all of us, more recently, global banking took a series of wrong turns. Confidence has been damaged. And without confidence, finance is nothing. So the great challenge we all face is to restore confidence in our financial system and to ensure that it works in the service of the real economy rather than in its own interests. Words will not be enough. Real actions and real change are required. No single country acting alone can solve the problems that led to the financial crisis. That is as true of the flaws in the international monetary system that allowed unsustainable imbalances in the pattern of demand to develop, as it is of the deficiencies in regulation that allowed dangerous increases in leverage and the rise of banks that became too important to fail. Like the financial system, the challenges we face are therefore global. International cooperation is vital if we are to make progress. And that's why central banks meet frequently and why I'm delighted to welcome Agustin, Alexander, and Mario to today's conference. In the United Kingdom, we've taken advantage of the opportunity afforded by the international reform agenda to put in place a much more robust and stable framework for banking in the future. So let me say a few words about those changes. The first is that as the Prime Minister mentioned, the Bank of England will take back its traditional supervisory role for the banking community and implement a new approach to banking regulation through the new Prudential Regulation Authority. London is a natural centre for global banking and we will support that with a reformed and thoughtful process of supervision, one that will avoid bureaucratic intrusion, but focus intensively on the key risks to the system as a whole. Second, the structure of banking will change with the implementation of the recommendations in the report of the Independent Commission on Banking to which the UK government has committed. Those elements of retail banking that are essential to the operation of the UK economy will be ring-fenced, and subject to higher capital requirements than the investment banking operations in the same group, which will be subject to common international standards. And that will ensure that London can support a large and vibrant banking system which doesn't pose a risk to the inevitably limited tax base of the United Kingdom. And that's vital to the sustainability of London as an international banking center. 
And third, together with our colleagues overseas, we are putting in place a new international resolution framework for large banks that operate across borders. It's essential that we have plans in place to deal with global banks that fail, both to ensure that creditors bear their share of the burden and to avoid chaotic bankruptcy. Relying on taxpayers to bail out banks is no longer an option. Much progress has been made, but there remain some difficult questions to resolve. These three measures, a strong and trustworthy regulatory framework supporting a robust banking system, are vital to create confidence in the financial system in London and to encourage investors from around the world to use the financial community of the city. So the changes in regulation and the environment in the city are good for the firms who work within it, good for the British economy, and I believe good for you. Over the years, many have referred to the city as the Wimbledon of international finance. The parallel's rather a good one. Britain hasn't yet produced another Wimbledon champion, although we're not far from it. Champions from other countries have come and gone. But what's remained constant is Wimbledon itself. Quietly but effectively, improving and ensuring its place as the best tournament in the world. And it's appropriate that the gold medals this year in tennis will be won and lost on the famous grass of centre court. Every great champion from, what, from wherever they have come around the world has always seen Wimbledon as the summit of their aspirations. And so it is with the city. Quietly but effectively, the change in regulation is taking place. Competition is welcomed and we attract the best players from around the world. The British economy benefits not from the once-in-a-lifetime euphoria of a British winner, but from the fact that year in, year out, the best firms want to recruit and do business in London, not least with each other. And that's the environment that we offer you. After a period of extraordinary expansion of the financial sector, there has been a recogn recognition, a widespread recognition, that a change of direction is needed. Too many large banks focused on trading complex instruments with each other. Finance needs to return to its original mission of mobilizing private sector capital to finance real investment opportunities around the world. And to achieve that, countries around the world, investors around the world, will need to come together in a spirit of cooperation. And what better time than the Olympics to reflect on that? No city has a better track record of linking savers and investors in a global capital market than London. Its future lies in its ability once again to finance an expanding and vibrant world economy. Of course, the world economy at present is rather far from vibrant, and the problems in the Euro area and around the world have inevitably affected London and the United Kingdom. So I'm going to be very interested, as I'm sure you are, in hearing the views of the other panelists on two questions. First, how do they see the prospects for the world economy, and what challenges do they think we face. And second, of course, after the two great sporting superpowers, who is going to win the coveted third spot in the Olympic medals table? Could it be Brazil? Or could it be Mexico? Or even perhaps the Euro area? Of course, I'm hoping that Britain crowns some champions of its own, as well as providing a venue for the Olympics and for you to be with us today and over the next weeks and days. Thank you.